all animals are going to die. All plants are going to die. All people are going to die. And um, as far as a human being is concerned, may bless God, uh, you are here to represent God. You're here to represent God. You're not here for yourself. You're here to do business for God. And so it's not easy to capture this reality because few people have it and so few people preach it and so few, few people know it. But you're here to allow Jesus to be your Savior, your Lord, and your Master. Would you believe if I told you now that you're a Christian, you don't own anything? Everything you had belonged to God. Your body belonged to God. Your soul belonged to God. Your spirit belonged to God. Your time belonged to God. Your talent belonged to God. Your resources belong to God. Say amen to this. Now here's the problem. The problem is this right here. Is that a lot of people are, in, are at odds with God. They're arguing with God about who's going to control who. You got some people want to control themselves and you too. That's some of these wives, they'll tell you. That's some of these husbands too, they'll tell you too. Always somebody around the corner trying to run your life. I watched the debate last night and then after the debate, everybody come on trying to tell you what you're supposed to think about it. I said to myself, I think for myself. Amen. So, so I, I just pray. Now, I'm going to read it then. I'm going to sit down. It said, now, I believe God wants us to make sure we are trusting the gospel for our salvation. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you tonight that salvation is free through the shed blood of Jesus. And everybody who believes that Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross and rose again, and, and you repent of your sins, accept Christ as Savior, there are no flaws in your salvation. Not one dot. You have perfect salvation. Mm -hmm. I believe God wants us to live a sanctified life. God wants us to be holy. How do I know that? That's what the Word says. And then you got people, oh, can't nobody live holy? When somebody says that, guess what they're doing? They're calling God a liar. Turn your knees, don't get caught up in that. I believe God wants us to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and to be led by the Holy Ghost and to uh, enjoy the fruit of the Holy Ghost and enjoy the gifts of the Holy Ghost and to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. Anybody believe that? Say amen. amen. I also believe God wants us to love him, to love each other, and I believe God wants us to preach the gospel to people who don't know him. You got a job to do, brother. Amen to God. And I believe God wants us to invite people to the house of God. Got a lot to turn this, you got a lot to do. I believe God wants us to pay tithe and give offerings. And when he blesses us with money, I believe God wants us to help the poor. I believe God wants us to do the same work that Jesus did. He wants us to walk in faith, hope, and love. Say amen to that. Amen. Yeah, I believe all that, you see. But that's a tall order right there. You know how to do that, you got to be smart, boy. You can't be a dummy, like I said. In order to walk like I'm talking right there, you need to aim for it every day. You need to get up aiming for it and understand that you own the planet to represent God. And either Jesus is going to be your Lord or the devil. One person said amen to that, I'm sorry. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Either God's going to be my father or the devil is going to be my father. If you want God to be your father, clap your hands, say praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, Father, tonight, I pray in Jesus' name that you would anoint my heart and my mind to teach, preach, and minister to the people. And I give your name all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you sit down, tell three people, never give up. <laughs> never give up. Whatever you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So I want to begin tonight by telling you that God loves you. Let me try it again. God loves you. And he loves you perfectly. How did I say he loves you? God loves you perfectly. And, uh, and he's provided everything that you need to win. He wants you to walk to his planet as a winner. He doesn't want your emotions all jacked up. And he doesn't want you depressed and oppressed and fearful and broken, sick and, and mad. God wants you to live the abundant life. And a lot of church people, listen, a lot of church people in America are only religious, but they don't know God. You see, when it comes down to the church of Jesus Christ, if you're not born again, you can't know him. <laughs> I said, if you're not born again, you can't know him. But if you're born again, you know him and you have the potential of walking in him and fulfilling your destiny in him. There's no life outside of Jesus. None. Raise your right hand. Say to you, there's no life, there's no life. outside of Jesus. You can't find life in sex. I know some of y'all tried, but it failed, didn't it? All you got out of the deal was a baby. <laughs> I'm right tonight, glory to God. You, you know, and some of y'all think y'all can eat your way to glory. Your belly's trying to tell you something right now. It sounds like, don't send anything else down today. <laughs> I've been laughing all day today. And some of y'all think you're going to get it through money and being popular and that sort of thing, you see. Uh, that, that, that egotistical devil has access to everybody who's not in God. When you're in God, he comes to get you, but he can't get you when you know he can't get you. If, if you know the devil can't get you, he, he know you know he can't get you, therefore he can't get you. I know that sounds like devil talk, but there's some truth off in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right tonight. I've been at this a long time, children, and I have not been just twiddling my thumbs the way some preachers did, you see. As some old preachers tonight wasted a lot of time chasing after the buck, chasing after the flesh, chasing after something other than God. And now the man has already said two minutes We'll let you know, game's almost over. So you young folk in here, you better watch yourself. You better watch how you're using your time. That devil will steal your life one moment at a time. Then next thing you know, we got an hour, then a week, then a month, then a year, then a decade. Next thing you know, you're old. And you be saying, where did the time go? It left one moment at a time. So raise your right hand and say, God bless me to use my time wisely. Because if you keep using your time foolishly, if you continue to use your time foolishly, somebody's going to call you a what? Huh? That's all I'm going to say about that. Amen. Let's get into the word of God. But tonight, we're in um, Proverbs 11. Now, today, America is, re is remembering 9-11. And the man on TV said it's been 23 years ago. I said, what? That's amazing to me, 23 years. So we remember those people who died. And believe it or not, my wife and I was on the East Coast at the same time. And we was going to catch a plane about the same time. That was plane was headed from California to be pulled to the building. I couldn't get on that plane because God had work for me to do. <laughs> Praise God, brother. Uh, Proverbs 11 chapter tonight. And there's some wisdom that you're going to find in this, this teaching tonight. And um, uh, let, me, let me say this to you now. The gospel, the gospel gives you power to be raised from the dead spiritually. Anybody who believes the gospel are no longer dead in the spirit. They are alive, brother. And they're not trying to get alive. They are alive. And not only that, they are seated in heavenly places in Christ. But once you get born again, you got to learn how to walk out whom God has made you. Now, I'm going to make a statement. 
a lot of the people in the church community don't realize that, that the majority of your life is based on how you think of what you say about and how you treat people. How you think about us, what you say to and about us, and how you treat us is going to come back on you. So you got a lot of folks unhappy and lonely and scared because you know, they've been dirty. God loves everybody the same. God loves the people that you don't like. Amen to God, brother. And you best watch what you're thinking about them, what you're saying about them, because same thing to you. I didn't know that at first. When I was a young guy, I didn't know this. But I'm an old guy now, I know. See, there's some things I know about God. There's some things I know about God that I never would have learned had I not quit that job in 1972 with a pregnant wife, you see. To go full-time in the ministry in 1972, had never stood in the pulpit, had not been licensed, had not been ordained. But God told me to walk over that job. And when I did, uh, he put me in school. And I tell you, God's school, God don't, he don't pass you along just because you've got the right age. You can be in the first grade, 25. <laughs> All right, put it on the screen for me, probably 11 and 1. I just, I just know something. Read everybody. Now, what is he talking about? What the world is that about? I'm glad you asked. Crooked merchants sometimes had two sets of weights, one for buying and one for selling. The buying weight were heavier than they should have been so that he would get more merchandise than he, should, than he paid for. The selling weights were lighter than the standard so that the customer got less than he paid for. There are dishonest practices in business today. And dishonest people in our school system, our social life, family life, politicians, government, and sorry to say in the church, there are dishonest people. And you need to know dishonest people can't walk with God. They can talk about him. They can preach about him, sing about him, but they can't know him. God does not deal with dishonest people. He can't. He love them, but he won't fellowship them. Uh, the message Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 1, God hates cheaters. God hates cheating in the marketplace. He loves it when business is above board. Tell the truth. Live the truth. Amen, somebody? Proverbs 11 and 2. Next verse. Read everybody. People get caught up in pride. Then a fall, then comes shame connected with the fall. You'd be surprised how many people walk the street right now, shame. Shame all over their soul, all over their spirit. Why? Because of what they've done. Shame comes with falling in ungodliness. But to be humble and down to earth reduces the danger of stumbling. It, re it reduces it when you are humble at the feet of Jesus and you are humble to do his bidding, the probability is very slim that you're going to be stumbling and falling. The Bible says in... Uh, uh, put on the screen for me, uh, Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs 16, chapter, verse number 18. Read everybody. Whatever you do, don't get up and, and start being arrogant. Well, can't nobody tell you nothing. You already know everything. You know more than the pastor. In fact, he ought to move over and give you the mic. Because you know you're getting ready for trouble, sister, brother. Pride always go 
ahead of people when they get ready to get destroyed. And a haughty spirit is always before fall. You know, always stay in a teaching mode. Always be willing to learn something from God and God's people. Because first pride, then the crash. And the bigger the ego, the harder the fall. The word ego, E-G-O, it's an acronym for edging God out. Ego. Some of say ego. ego. Edging God out. Don't edge him out. Stay humble under the word and spirit of God. And by the way, when you humble yourself to obey God's word, sometimes it's not going to be pleasant. Amen. Sometimes it's painful obeying God. It doesn't always feel good. You're not always ready to run around the wall and jump and yell hard. Sometimes you say, oh my, this is tough, you see. It's designed to be that way. It's designed for you to suffer in the process of going with God. What must you suffer? The loss of everything. The lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes and the pride of your life and your tithe and offering. Time and energy has been given to God. Now, you're not trying to earn anything, but you're simply uh, obeying God. You're doing what God told you to do so he can bless you. Hey, brother, hey, sister, may I tell you tonight, it is impossible to obey God and go unblessed. All the unblessed people in God's church, they're unblessed because they're hard-headed. They won't obey. If you obey God with great consistency, God's going gonna to honor your life. What is said in Peter that says, humble yourself, therefore, under the, uh, under the mighty hand of God. And then he said these words, in due season, what is he going to do? See, most, most people are trying to exhort themselves. Everybody want to be seen. Amen to God. Even folks sit in the corner don't say that. They want you to see them. Say they ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Praise God. That's what they are saying. So, so the key to being seen in the spiritual world is get up under God. And from your heart say, yes, Lord. And, and let him hear you say yes. And let him see you think it out, speak it out, and walk it out. In your dealings with who? Other people. I'm right tonight. Psalms, what's on the screen for me? Psalms 140, uh, 13. The 140 division of Psalm verse number 13. Praise God. You got to hear it on you. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. I don't know about you, but I want his presence in my life. Anybody want his presence in your life? Hallelujah. And the way to have his presence in your life is to obey him. Live a righteous life. Psalms 24, division, verse 3, 4, and 5. Psalms 24, verse 3, 4, and 5. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Uh, who shall stand in his holy place? That's where I want to be. How about you, brother? Mm -hmm. Verse 4. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sown deceitfully. He's not a liar. He's not caught up in vanity. His heart is pure. Next verse. Read everybody. Oh, y'all can read that better. Now read that again. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord. Why? Because he got his heart right. Ask God daily, Father, grace me to have the right heart. Sometimes when I'm in my private press, press spot, I say, God, fix my heart. Give, give me the grace to, to think of you the way I need to think of you. Great, grace me to have the right motive and the right attitude. Grace me not to be operating in deception. Shine in my soul and show me my error. 
although you can't repent for me, but I, I believe if you show me me and I see what's wrong with me, I think I'll repent. I do, brother. You shall receive the blessing from the Lord. From who? The Lord. Not from the bishop, not from some preacher. God's going to bless you. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Can you imagine walking around with a clean heart and righteousness and full pockets full of money? <laughs> Amen. And enjoying life. That's what God wants for you. Amen to God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 13. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 10. Read everybody. If you want to have a, a good life, it, 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 for he that will love life, you, you want a life that you love, and, and, and you want to see some good days. Good, somebody say good days. Let him reframe his tongue from evil. That tongue get you in more trouble than anything else in your body. That little pink thing in your mouth. You need to put a, put, put a governor on that thing, boy. I'm right tonight. For you never loved life and see a good day. Let him reframe his tongue, to take control of his tongue, that it speaks no evil, and his lips, that they speak no guile. Never don't go around there lying and going on. Next verse. Read everybody. Do good, get away from evil, fight off evil. I said fight off evil and just do, just do good. And, and by the way, when you're fighting off evil and doing good, you can always have somebody around taking advantage of you. They think they're taking advantage of you. They'll talk about your lie on you, do it, then they can't pull you down. Because what the devil is doing is he's trying to use those people to bring you back down to where they are. But don't fall for it. Let him ensure you even do good. Let him seek peace. Seek to get along with everybody and ensue it. Next verse. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. When you're living right, God's watching you. I said, when you're living right, God watches you. And guess what else he does? His ears are open unto your prayer. See, sometimes your prayer is not being answered. It's because you got a bad heart. Sometimes your heart ain't right. Ain't living right. Ain't thinking right. I would tell people, when you want to have a good prayer life, make sure you get your heart right first. Because you can pray five hours and get nothing. Because your heart ain't right. But the lives of the Lord over the righteous ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I don't know about you, brothers, tonight. But I don't want God's face to be against me. I want God to look on my life with favor. Why? I need God. I got enough sense to know that I don't know. And I got enough sense to know that I need God. Think what I need, people can't provide it. What I need, people don't want it. What I need, people can't prevent me from getting it. What I need is in the spiritual world. And I don't want him looking on me with disdain. I want God to look on me with favor. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Turn your name and say, don't do no evil. Now, hey, brother, hey, sister, listen to these words right here. If Satan is fighting you and God is resisting you, what chance do you have of surviving? Who said that? You right, Deacon. You got some people so dumb. They just they catch hands of the devil. They go out and start fornicating and committing adultery and lying and cheating and doing all kind of evil stuff. And then when their brains start being beat out, they, they come to God. I don't know why God is doing this to me. You did it to yourself, you big dummy. Stop it. Stop. I need you to pray for me, Bishop. I'm going through. Stop being so hard-headed and pray for yourself. 
God will hear your prayer. But he wants you to humble yourself first. Even in the Lord's prayer, forgive us our, as we, then let's go on and pray. Amen. All right, now. Proverbs 11 and 2. But did we do two already? Well, let's do it again. Read, everybody, read. Don't be ashamed, brother. Proverbs 11 and 3. The, the integrity of the upright will, shall guide them, but the perverseness of the transgressors shall destroy them. You can't keep doing evil and wrong and think you're not going to get in trouble. And the lying preacher, well, God understands my heart. He sure does. It's full of rebellion. And here's somebody else, well, don't be judging me. I'm saved by grace. Well, if you're saved by grace, act like it. I was meditating today, and so it just came to me. As God said, now you got some people who claim that they are saved by grace, but they're living for the devil. They claim they're saved by grace, and they claim that they really want to walk with God, but they just can't do it. And then God spoke these words to me. He said, what they are saying is, is that the blood of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the word of God, and the use of the name Jesus does not have enough power to overcome the devil. The devil just goes, just going to walk on through there and you can't help yourself. The devil lives a lot. People lying when they said that. Greater is he who's inside of you than he that's in the world. The problem is that a lot of people don't want to pay the price. There's a price to be paid to walk with God. You can't have your flesh and God's will too. One of them got to be given up. It's one or the other. Y'all still like that tonight? I love y'all, but somebody got to tell y'all the truth around here, brother. Honesty is the best policy. When I was a lad of a boy there in East Texas, you see, the old folks would always tell us, boy, honesty is the best policy. I didn't know they were getting it out of the scriptures. I didn't know that that was a biblical scripture. And some of them old people could have read, but they had a lot of wisdom. They used to call it mother wit. They knew how to get in the position for God to bless them. I'm so glad I was raised around old people. Them old people helped me, boy. They kept me from doing some things that I, that I would have done ordinarily. If you don't have an old friend, get you one. But don't get an old fool, though. Don't get an old person who's broken and trying to borrow your money to run. Try to find you some old person got some gear. <laughs> All right today, brother. And who's living reasonably well because those old people are willing to tell you where the pitfalls are. They'll tell you how they blew it. And they'll tell you, no, don't do that, boy. Oh, don't do that. I know a woman did that one year. Oh, she died young. You got to have somebody who will tell you the truth. You don't need, you don't need people around you always going along with you. Yeah, girl, I don't blame you. He ran around on you. Go get you a, go get you a man. He, he got a woman. Then go pay him back. How you going to pay him back being a hoe? Have you lost your mind? Going to pay him back. Who gives some old snagger too fool ain't got no money? Get some kind of disease from him, trying to pay your husband back. Well, amen, son. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. The integrity of upright people will guide them on the right track. The crookedness of the unfaithful is that downfall. They may look like they're getting by, but they're not. The hand of, of, of God, the, the truth of God has a way. You get older, you get older, and young people, they run zip in, zip down, do this, and they zip, zip in, they work, they party at 2 o'clock, get up at 6 to go to work, and they run, run, run. 
Boy, but after a while. Them birthdays. Hello, anybody in doubt? Them birthdays going to stop you, brother. Y'all ain't saying amen out there. Verse 4. Verse 4. Read everybody. Money cannot avert. That is, it will not prevent you from going through the, the wrath that you're going to get. Money cannot avert uh, or prevent the wrath of God. The wrath of God in time or in eternity. Righteousness is a safeguard against premature death in the here and now, and only those who are clothed in the righteousness of God will escape the second death. And the only way you have that righteousness, brother, is being redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus, born of the Holy Ghost, and you're walking in that word. You may not live perfect every day, but you have a desire to. Because once a man has truly been regenerated, it places in him a desire to be pleasing to God. And you're not trying to be pleasing to God because you want to be saved. You want to be pleasing to God because you are saved. You find I'm saved, but they're still living for the devil. How in the world are you going to say you're saved and still living for the devil? If you're still living for the devil, you are of the devil. Amen. And when you die, you got to go with him. You can't live for the devil 55, 6, or 7 years time when you hear it die. Well, come on, take me, God. God said, who? What's your name? <laughs> In fact, he said these words right here, depart from me. I don't know, I don't even know your name. Verse 5 and 6. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own Wickedness, good God Almighty. Verse 6. The righteous of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. They think they slick. Doing a lot of stuff in the back room. Saying a lot of stuff they shouldn't say. And they don't know God is eavesdropping on everything I say. Not only does God hear what I say, but he's reading my thoughts. And not only does he read my thoughts, he knows my motive and my attitude. Man, God, you, can't, you can't trick God. You may trick her. You may trick him, but you can't trick God. He got you on your knees. He got your number. <laughs> Praise God, man. The righteousness of the upright shall be their armor, but the ways of the wickedness are dangerous and destructive. Righteousness, I don't not only guide good men, it will also deliver them from uh, the perils seen and unseen. Sometimes you'd be surprised when you live right, there's something the devil trying to do you and God won't even let you find out about it. Just, just block it because your life is pleasing to God. The unregenerate man will be caught up and their lust and their greed. There's a program I see on television when I have since watched it. I don't know, I just like to watch the, the greed in America. They show how they greedy people. Just they get, they're making money, they got enough to live on, but they get greedy. And they want their money and everybody else's money. And, if, and one thing about getting greedy for money, you never can't get enough. Once you start stealing it, you can't stop stealing it. You're going to get popped. And boy, it's a bad thing to mess with God's money. Proverbs 7, 11 and 7. Read everybody. When the wicked man dies, his expectation shall appear. In other words, that's it for him. That's it. He better get all he can get while he's down here. If I was a sinner, man, I'd be partying every day and night if I could. Because that's all you're going to get. Amen. It has been said that a fool is a man all the... It, said, it has been said that a fool is a man all of whose 
plans in at the grave. When the coffin lid closes, all his hopes are ended. The things he lived for are no longer his. And his expectation of life and prosperity is gone forever. Old man told me down there, I guess I was a chaplain at the mission. He said, now, he said, he said, you, you, you got some guy that jealous of their wives? He said, well, once a man's dead, he ain't jealous of his wife no more. He said, you can take his wife down to that coffin and tongue kiss his wife right in front of him as he lay there, and he ain't going to say a word. <laughs> While he's alive, you mine, you mine, yeah, but after you're dead, somebody's going to get up. <laughs> <laughs> like that woman then on her deathbed, she's the doctor told she's gonna die in a few days. So she said, John, when I die, please don't marry no old woman and give her my clothes. And John said, Hey babe, what you make you think she's gonna be old? <laughs> It'll come tomorrow to you, isn't it? Death is the great equalizer. I said, death is the great equalizer. Oh, but Bishop, I take my vitamins. Death is the great equalizer. Oh, yeah, Bishop, I, but I join the spa and I exercise every day. Death. Turn your name and say, death. death. So I want to advise all of you to get ready for it. But like it or not, here he come. And if I were you, I'd be saying, God, I want to make sure that I'm ready. Verse 8, verse 8. Read everybody. <laughs> the righteous man is rescued from trouble. This does not mean, however, that those who follow God will, ne will never have any problems. Many times they will experience more difficulties and opposition because of their commitment to God. But people who do what God says is right and can be assured that when they suffer or have trouble, God will come to their rescue. Has anybody lived right one time and God, you got in trouble, God came and rescued you? He came and found you, came and rescued you. And, worked, and he worked things out the best in his own time. Um, Haman, in the book of Ephesus, plotted to have Mordecai hanged, but he ended up being hung himself. He built a gallows for Mordecai, but he got hung on it. You better watch who you digging ditches for. You don't mess around falling in that ditch yourself. Say amen, somebody. For all you baby saints, we will be reading the book of Esther real soon so you can learn about Haman and Mordecai. When you live right, the devil's people trying to get you, but they, they, they switch places and get to where you were. Daniel was thrown into the den of lions, but God delivered him and then took his, anim his enemies and, and their kids and wife and put them where Daniel was. And then those lions destroyed those people. Daniel was in a dinner lounge sleep. But when those people got thrown in there, the lounge had lunch, brother. The Israelites were delivered out of the Red Sea. And their enemies, the Egyptians, were drowned in the same Red Sea. Peter was delivered from the prison, and the jailers were put in the same cell and were put to death. You know, a lot of people... They go after things in life. They kill people. They rob. They murder. They do all this stuff, but it doesn't solve anything for them. Marvin, I sent you some information. Put it on screen for me now, would you please? Alexander the Great was not satisfied even when he had completely subdued the nations. He wept because there were no more worlds to conquer. And he died at an early age in a state of debauchery. Hannibal, who filled three baskets, three, three bushels with the gold 
rings taken from the knights he had slaughtered, committed suicide by swallowing poison. And few noted his passing, and he left this earth completely unmourned. Julius Caesar, dyeing his garments in the blood of one million of his foes, conquered 800 cities, only to be stabbed by his best friends at the scene of his greatest triumph. Napoleon, the feared conqueror, after being in the scourge of, of Europe, spent his last years in banishment. All these great people had all this going on. And some people, I want to be so great, so great. Stop seeking to be great and seek to be humble. Let God raise you the way you want to be. Don't be killing people and, and bad-mouthing people, trying to pull other people down to put yourself up. You do that, you're going to get in trouble. Jack Alexander the Great, just like all these great men I just read about. Big name, people feared them, but they died, and guess where they are right now? In hell, waiting for the liquor fire. Turn your knees and say, don't go after them, amen. The ninth verse, Proverbs 11 and 9. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. And an apostate or hypocrite seeks to undermine the faith of his neighbor with doubts and denials. An apostate is someone who has abandoned their religious faith. They used to be believers, but now they don't believe anymore. They're just going through the motion. They, they don't leave the church, that's all they know, but they're not in Christ. Just, they talk to talk, but they won't walk to walk. It's dangerous to know the truth and to abandon it. It's dangerous to know what God is saying to you, and you choose to reject it, because you know what's going to happen to you? At some point, you lose the capacity to respond positively, and you're as good as dead. You know you ought to be praying, but you won't. You know you ought to be fasting, but you won't. You know you should be getting into the word, and you won't. You know God said it, but you won't. And then if you keep saying no, God will stop drawing you. And once God stops drawing you, you're done for. Always respond positively to the drawing of the Spirit of God. Because you don't go to God because of your righteousness, and you don't go to God because you're deep. Or because you've been in the church all your life. No, you go after God when God draw you. If God is talking to you, don't tell him no. Run to him. Because you don't want God to stop talking to you. The last thing you want God to say to you is have your way. You may think you want to do your thing, but no, you don't. Because your thing, the wedges of sin is what? But knowledge of the truth enables the righteous to detest the counterfeit. When you love the truth, then the Holy Ghost will reveal to you the counterfeit church folk. And when you see counterfeit people, at any point you say, you counterfeit, don't say that. Just say, hi, how are you? And go about your business. Don't judge them. Leave them alone. God, God's got that. Because I'll tell you something, I've seen this over the years. When you start judging and criticizing people, I don't care if they, live, they are living a bad life. God's going to get you. Yeah, but they wrong. Yeah, I know about how wrong they are. But the question is, does God love them? Nobody said it. I'm going to try it again. Does God love them? Yes. And he does not want you to condemn them. Those are the people that Jesus suffered and bled and died for, and he wants to save them, and he's not going to think highly of me to, to verbally attack them or to do something to bring harm to them. You'll get in trouble like that. And to save himself, the, 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 the knowledge of the truth enables the righteous to detect the counterfeit and to save himself and others from subversion. This is the attempt to weaken or destroy the work of God. Everybody don't love God and everybody don't love God's word. Some people fight God's work. I don't know why they're doing that. I don't know why they doing. should be doing it. They're fighting God's work. Amen. So, so don't get caught up in that. Humble yourself 
to God and his word and God is obligated to give you life. Y'all ain't saying amen tonight. Verse 10. Verse 10. Next verse. Read everybody. Woo. <laughs> there are two occasions when a city breaks out in joyful celebration. Uh, one of them is when the righteous prosper and the other is when the wicked perishes. I love to see righteous people do good because it gives me hope. Amen. When righteous people are doing good, I watch them. So I'm going to do what they did. I'm going to do what they did because I want to get what they have. Mark the perfect man. The woman who's doing it right. Whatever they're doing, do it with them. Because God is not a God to respect the person. What he's done for others, he will do for you. Say amen to this. So the blessings of the upright will bring blessings to the city. When you're around blessed people, it's just good for you. Remember when, when Peter allowed Jesus to use his boat and uh, Jesus told him to go fishing. And he responded to Jesus by saying, I've been toiling um, all night, but I haven't caught anything. But nevertheless, since you said it, I'm going to obey. I, I, somebody in here tonight need, need to get that nevertheless spirit on you. I don't understand this, but nevertheless, I'm going to obey. And when Peter got into that never, nevertheless mentality and he obeyed God, the Bible talks about he got so many fish until his boat began to sink. And he had some friends, hey, hey, come over and get some of these fish. And they got so many fish on their boat, they boat two started sinking. Now those men got in on Peter's overflow. Y'all didn't hear me. That's why it's good to be around blessed people. Stop running with all these old cursed people. Don't run with curse people. On the job with a woman, she'd run around on her and tell her, come on, go with me. Don't go but her. She got a curse on her. Stay with me, liars and these gangbangers and drug dealers and, and folks who don't want to work are always trying to get something free. Run from them. They got demons on them. Land up scratching and going on, don't want to go to work. Ashy people. Something about these ashy folks, man. If they ash you, run. I'll give them some lotion. You go use this right here. <laughs> oh, God, y'all help me tonight. But what I'm trying to say is this. Get with people who are trying to go somewhere, who are trying to do something positive with their lives, who are not always trying to get their welfare increased. I remember when I was driving bus for, for back then it was RTD. I'm driving bus going on Adam Woo. And I pick up these girls and then you know, pick up people. That's it. So, so one day, a, a young lady got on the bus and she had two or three kids. I said, girl, I didn't know you had a kid. He said, no, I don't have no kid. I said, what you, what you doing? He said, I'm going to down to the welfare office and get on welfare. I'm going to use these kids. And I said to myself, you talk about a crooked woman. A low-down woman getting some kids from her friend and went to the welfare office to get welfare over those kids that did not belong to her so she could get some cheap money. But that money, that money is not all money ain't good money. God honors righteousness, people. You just can't keep on doing right and keep on doing right and keep on doing right and God not honor you. Raise your right and say, God will honor me. I'm about done. Is this happening to anybody tonight? Praise God, brother. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 34. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 34. The Bible said these words. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. America is in trouble tonight 
because of all of the liars who are in charge. Lying business people. Lying politicians. And sorry to say lying preachers. Lie brings curses on a nation. America at one time was a great nation because of the morality. It had moral fiber. But there's so many crooks now. And the Bible says that, that righteousness exhausts a nation, but sin is a report. Sin brings a nation down. And if we have a time that the, the, the America need a holy churches right now, we need some holy churches, holy people who's holding up the bloodstained banner of God, living God's way. Am I right about it? Proverbs 4, 7, and 8. I'm about done. Proverbs 4, 7, and 8. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. If you get full of wisdom, and you walk in it, she shall promote thee. And then listen, when God promotes you, can't nobody demote you. <laughs> Some of you young people in here today, God want to give you a business idea that's going to redeem great sums of money for you. All you need to do is to truly repent of your sins and start living right every day. And you walk right into a blessing where God not only will bless you, but he'll bless you to be a blessing to others. You can be giving other people jobs. You can become somebody in God. Why should the devil's people get all the ideas? Don't you think God's people should get some? Yes. But we got to stop paying footsteps with the devil and leave people alone. Love your family, your friends, and your enemies and stop messing with these low-down low people who got the devil in them. They ain't going nowhere. They're going to they get in trouble. Some of them are going to die before the time. Messing with the wrong people. I'm not lying either, brother. Exhort her and she shall promote thee and she shall bring thee to honor. I'm about done, about done. Last verse, I got two more and I'll be done. The 12th verse, Hebrew, not Hebrews, Proverbs 11 and 12. Proverbs 11 and 12. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Get all the anger out of you, all the deceit out of you, and watch God do some great things in your life. The blessings of the upright will bring blessing to the city. The deceit and broken promises, fraud and lies and profanity of the wicked are enough to ruin any government and any nation. The, the profanity and, and the crookedness and the backbiting and the lying and young men putting things in their pockets on their hand. How did it get in there? The devil is trying to turn young men into feminine, feminine men. He's got men that want to wear skirts. What woman want to go out with a man with a skirt on? Come on, sister, why would you do yourself like that? A man with a suit on, and, and his hair is more curly than yours. And then he got fingernail products on. When y'all get quiet, y'all scared to say amen to this year? Thank you, Lord. Now, to belittle another man is to insult God. Listen, he that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. So he's going to belittle his neighbor. To belittle another man is, is, to be in, is to insult God and to hurt and bring harm to a man is to invite into your own life misery. Watch how you treat people. What did I just say? Last verse and I'm done. This is my last one for real. I'm not lying this time. I'm just I'm, I'm telling the whole truth this time, amen. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. Galatians 6, 7 and, uh, through 10. Galatians chapter 6. And this is it. This is it. Be not deceived. 
God is not mocked. He's not to be trifled with. For whatsoever a man soweth, that, that, and somebody hear me say that, yes. shall he reap. I didn't write it, but I'm going to show a preacher, dear God. And guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to watch what I'm sowing. I want some good things to happen to me. I'm going to be healed in the body. I want to be healed in my emotions. I want enough money to live well. I want to be a blessing to God and a blessing to people. Amen. So I got to watch how I'm so, hey, listen, listen. People are not your problem. People are not your answer. They are your opportunity to sow. You sow thoughts. You sow attitudes. You sow words. You sow deeds. Amen to God. And it took me a while to realize the woman I'm married to, I, I can get a lot of blessings off her. You know, I get blessings off my wife by treating her right. Got to treat her right. I got I to gotta know when to hug her and how to squeeze her. I don't know. I got I to gotta know how to sweet, say good words to her. Amen to God. I got to say something. Like my wife said something the other day, and she was, she was upset about something. She said something. And so I went and hugged her. I said, oh, baby, you're going to be all right. And she just melted in my arm. I said, I got her. I got her. I got her. Now, now, I could have been a girly man. I could have been a girly man. And so I said, you can't talk to me like this. But I was a robust brother. I was a Barry White. Amen. <laughs> Can't get enough of your love, baby. <laughs> Say amen to this word right here. <laughs> amen. So you, but you got to know what you're doing. See, you have to overcome your inferiority complex as a man in order to treat a woman right. If a woman won't follow a man, it's not her fault. Uh-oh. Up, jumped the devil in a white nightgown. Because <laughs> a woman is just looking for a man to love her into it. And you got to talk her into it. You got to use words. Women love to hear you say it. Sometimes they know you're lying, but they won't hear it anyway. <laughs> No, that, scratch that. Don't put that on the <laughs> When you're dealing with a womb, bruh, you can't be going around trying to have her to take care of you. You got to take care of her. Oh, God help me, Holy Ghost. God give men wisdom how to sow into their wives. If you sow into her right, she'll glow, brother. She'll, she'll be purring like a kitten. Just, she'll just be calm and everything. And you can be upstairs and say, baby, I don't feel like coming down to breakfast today. Bring me my breakfast upstairs to my bed. And she'll say, how do you want your eggs? <laughs> and you you, you got to be a bad man to be able to do that, boy. Because a lot of these women said, bring your breakfast. They said, well, you better come down here and cook it. <laughs> Am I right about it? <laughs> but love and mercy and compassion towards your wife, towards your husband, towards people. And let your relationship with people be governed by the word of God. Treat people the way the Bible told you to. You can't go wrong. Don't become their judge. Become their lover and tell them the truth. But don't let them cause you to compromise your stand in God. I love you, man, but I can't go do that with you. Oh, I thought you were my friend. I am your friend, but God is my father. And I'm on this earth to please him because I'm keenly aware of the fact that someday I got to leave this body and I got to face him. Turn your nation, you got to face God. And he ain't going to be going with no pity party. Talking about, they hurt me, God. God said, yeah, they hurt me too. But just because they hurt you, they give you the right to act the fool. Overcome the hurt. 
Everybody been hurt. But you can overcome it. You can become a lover, a giver, and a fall a giver. Next verse, I'm done. I should have told y'all a set of verses. I just said whatever. <laughs> well, he that soared to his flesh shall of the flesh do what? But he that soared to the spirit shall reap life. How long? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I love y'all tonight. I know some of y'all take some heavy stuff home with you tonight, but it's okay. I love you. And the truth shall do what? Now, if you're facing some challenges in your life tonight, come stand around the altar for a minute. It's going to take a minute for you. If you're facing, just come on the altar and leave it on the altar tonight. Line up on the altars. be Over here, daughter. You're right here. Right there. Right over there. I've had tears and sorrows. I've had questions about tomorrow. There's been times when I felt so all alone. But in those lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, I found out that Jesus was my own. So I thank God for the mountain and I thank God for the valley and I thank God for the trials he's brought me through for if I had never had a problem I would not have known God could solve them I would not have known faith in God could do I'm singing through it all through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all, yes, I've learned to depend upon His word. On the altar, raise both your hands before God. Through it all, on the altar, I want everybody on the altar to say these words. I want you to say, God, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead on the third day. And I believe he's my savior. You know what I'm facing today. And by faith, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be faithful in church attendance. I'm going to obey the word the best I know how. And by faith, as I obey you, you're going to talk to me. You're going to lead me. You're going to guide me as I, by faith, obey the word. You're going to bring me out of this. You're going to supply me in the name of Jesus. I believe that the blood of Jesus cleanses me now. The blood of Jesus covers me now and I repent of all of my sins and I'm forgiven and I'm getting a brand new start tonight. Satan, you are a liar. I cast you away from my life in the name of Jesus and I'm getting ready to clap my hands 
And I'm getting ready to say, thank you, Jesus. And everything is going to turn out fine in my life by faith. Clap your hands and say, praise the Lord. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on, say, praise the Lord. Say, praise the Lord. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Clap your hands. Clap your hands and say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Shout glory to God. Claim your victory tonight. Claim your healing tonight. Claim your glory tonight from the Lord. Come on, brother. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Everybody clap your hands and say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, read your Bible fast and pray. Return to your seat, praising God. Amen. Everything's going to be all, all right, sister. Hey, brother, everything's going to be all right by faith. We walk by what? Not by sight. Do we have any first time guests here tonight? Anybody here for the first time? Any first timers? All right. Let's prepare ourselves for tithes and offerings tonight. Mother Hill, would you give for us tonight, darling? I appreciate it. Uh, let's prepare ourselves for tithes and offering tonight. First timer? Your first timer? God bless you. So who invited you? Well, praise the Lord, sister. Does he know Christ already? What's your name? What did he say? Shante. Everybody can say, God bless Shante. Say, God bless your dad. Thank you for coming, Shante. Come again, brother. You may be seated. Praise God. Raise your hand one more. This is your first time? And your name is? And who invited you? You have some physical problems? Would you like to be healed? Come here. Come here. Get the oil. Get the oil. Come here, sweetie. God's going to heal her tonight. I am the Lord, your healer. And he heal your disease. Stand right here, daughter. I am the Lord. Okay. Uh, somebody hold that for her. Let me ask you, darling. Where is Jesus at? Jesus is in heaven. Would you like to have him in your heart? Are you sure? You say. Okay, raise your hand and close your eyes. I'm going to lay hands on you tonight. I'm anointed by God to lay hands on people and they get healed. And God's going to heal you tonight. Now, sometimes when I pray for people, they feel something. But you don't have to feel anything to be healed. You have to believe to be healed. But you're going to feel God's presence tonight. Well, I anoint you with oil. The Bible said, anoint with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Pray for the sick tonight. Glory to God.
God, I lay hands on her. Someone say, heal her. Some say, heal her. Heal her. In the name of Jesus. My healer. Sing, I am the God. I am the God. There's another lady I'm supposed to pray for tonight. Where is she? Ah, oh, where did she leave? I am the Lord. You, you, you. Come here. Ah. I sent my word and I healed their disease. Just stand right here, daughter. You've been through a lot. Raise your hand, close your eyes. You've been through a lot. Ba -ba -ba but somebody in your family prayed for you when you was a child. And those prayers are yet reverberating in heaven today. And I'm only hands on you. And if I can get you to obey the Bible, read, study, be faithful and come in the church here. And your life is going to take on a brand new flavor. And I'm only hands on you. God's going to touch you tonight. Yeah, my mind. come to come today. He's up on her already, my dear. You've been hurt enough. You've been hurt enough. You've been hurt enough. You've been hurt enough. There it is up on you to receive it now. Receive it. God, 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 be dealt with by the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Huh? Show. Sure. <laughs> Say I'm saved. Say I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. I'm forgiven. All the bad things that has happened to me is not going to be a stumbling block. It's going to be a stepping stone. I'm going forward. <clears throat> oh, shut up. Lay your hand right there on her stomach, sister. Let every yoke be destroyed. Every yoke be destroyed. Hasha, 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 hasha. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Share that. And he lit thee. I'm the Lord. I am the Lord. Your healer. Shama Rebene. I sit in my word. That's okay. That's okay, sir. That's okay. Heal your disease. Let God finish what he's doing. I am the Lord. Ikadebi. Your healer. Touch your soul, God. Touch your spirit. Let her know how loved she is. She's going through some tough times, y'all. I can tell you where she's been. I'm not going to put her business in the street. But God is with her now. God sent her to this house so he can minister to her. In the name of Jesus, she's going to have a bounce back in her life. <laughs> Somebody said bounce back in her life. Hey, I help her up, help her up. Are you a member of this church right here? Hmm? Y'all safe here? Yeah. Your life is taking on a new flavor too. I love you. I love you. Are, are, are you going to be a member here? Okay, go go get it. have a seat right over there. Good night. So say amen for her. She came down and got saved last week, and God getting ready to fill her with the Holy Ghost. Got to do a work in her life. All I need is about three or four folks to help me pray. We'll get her done. Turn your knees to help me pray. We'll get her done. We'll get her done. All right, stand to your feet. I think we're going now. Say with me, beloveds, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that love it, is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, 
No, it's not God. For God is love. Heaven to say, I love everybody. Say, they don't have to love me, but I sure love them. Now, child of God, be covered with Christ's blood. Be surrounded with angels. Make sure you read your scriptures and pray. Live right, and God's going to honor you. You may come and give. God bless you. Hold to his hand. Thank you for attending Loving Unity Christian Fellowship on today. We would like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181. Or you can use our new church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y.org and you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're gonna have a good time.